This video is going to be all about chainsaws. So I lined up a bunch of saws here, a few of which need work. So let's uh, get into this. Let's fix some of the broken ones here and take them all out and test them and talk about them. So I'll just talk about them real quick first. This one here, this is an antique chainsaw. I bought this at a yard sale. I've never messed with it before. I thought it looked cool. I paid 40 bucks for it. I've had it for a few years. This one here, this is my dad's saw that he bought brand new in the mid 80s and it's been around the whole time. This here, this is like my primary chainsaw that I use. I bought that brand new right after Hurricane Irene. This here is uh, probably my secondary chainsaw that I use. This is something I got out of the trash that was broken. This here, this one here, a guy gave it to me. It was his chainsaw. He put the wrong gas in it, you know, straight gas, and it lost compression. He went to get it fixed, and the cost of repairing this chainsaw from the dealer was more money than a brand new chainsaw. So he just bought a new one instead and gave it to me, and I fixed it with uh, cheap aftermarket parts on eBay. They were only like 20 bucks. Now, putting a cylinder and a head in this one is a pretty hard job. You kind of have to take the entire saw apart. But it's been running since fine since then. This one here my dad bought new a few years ago. This one here I bought this really cheap at a yard sale. Didn't run. I think I had to put a carburetor on it. I bought a cheap eBay carburetor. And it's been running fine ever since. This one here. I just got this one for free actually. This is how I got it. I was driving down the road. And I saw this chainsaw case on the side of the road with a free sign on it. I was thinking, oh, that's just a case. Don't want it. But then I was like, well, let me just check, make sure there's no chainsaw in there. Opened it up, and that was in there. And then, and then the thing ran. I didn't even have to do anything to it. So that's pretty cool. Now, these chainsaws, this is an extremely cheap chainsaw. And um, they still, I'm pretty sure they still sell these. They're like 100 bucks, which, you know, that's a good thing because this maybe a lot of people's first chainsaw because it's just such an attractive price my biggest complaint with these is it's missing a very important feature right here you can see on every one of these other chainsaws right there it's got these teeth and those are i almost consider them necessary because when you're cutting into a log what you do is you stab these into the log and then you use that as like a fulcrum point and you can use you know the chainsaw instead of just trying to push the thing down through the log you can lift up on the handle and it gets you a lot more power when you're trying to cut through the log let me bring that outside quick I'll show you what I mean alright so you can see what I mean by this with these teeth missing. So here I'm cut halfway into the log and with this saw you kind of have to push down the whole time to cut. Now most saws you can stab those teeth in there and lift up on this handle and you get a lot more power. For example even this one, you know they're little but they're there. So what you do is you stab that in and then I can really get a lot of power on that because that's like a fulcrum point and you can lift up on this handle. Oh, they cut nice when they're sharp though. That cut that real quick for this little saw. So you can see what I mean. That's kind of an annoying thing that that's missing on this chainsaw. I wonder if I can add it. I don't know. It doesn't look like it. All right, so as I was editing this video, I'm like, let me just check. So I type in Pool on Pro 260 on eBay, and right there, that's it. So uh, I'm going to add that to that chainsaw. All right, so here's like a comparable brand new saw that's like that Pool on. You can see, look how cheap this thing is. You know, $77 free shipping. Alright, and then the last chainsaw. This one right here. A uh, guy was moving. I dropped off a 
empty dump truck. I was like, here, throw all your garbage in there. And he, he threw this out. And I pulled it out of the trash. And the thing ran. I've never even had to do anything to this. And this is definitely, a, it's got a very nice style to it. I really like this chainsaw. It's a very, very small saw too, which is nice. Let's, uh, it's been a few years since I've tried to start this thing. Let's bring that outside and see if it runs. cool this is a chainsaw I've never had to fix and uh, it just started up right now pretty easy no starting fluid after not running for years and it's idling good and you know the power is right where it should be another funny thing about this one it doesn't seem to have any clutch in it um, it just the chain goes no matter what which you know I don't really mind it and you know this is an old one too there's no uh, it's old enough to the point where there's no safety bar on it or hand shield right here. Alright, let's go mess with another one. Alright, well that ran pretty well. Alright, so the next one, let's get into one of these broken ones. This orange one here has a issue with the pull start. Let's see if we can get that fixed. Alright, so this chainsaw here I'm working on, it's got a problem where the pull string doesn't go in. So you can see if I pull this out, it doesn't wind back up. And the spring is good. The issue is it's binding up on the actual, um, you know, it, it almost does. But, you know, I was just running it and this is hanging out the whole time. So, this needs to be fixed. So, I've already been, I've been messing with this for a little bit. I've been oiling this. And I even had it apart once and cleaned it. But it's still binding up. So, we're going to take this all back apart. And I got an idea to fix that. Usually taking these apart with these springs is not fun because it's easy to have the spring just explode and go everywhere and then winding it back up can be very difficult. And people often make that mistake when just ch changing a broken rope. You know, if you're just changing a rope, you don't need to take this off. But in this case, I do. So I don't want that. See, I got this lifted up, but I don't want this to explode. See, that's, that's what I didn't want to happen. Alright. Well, I'll show you how to fix that. Not a fun situation, but it is recoverable. I had it apart before and I kept it together. Oh well. Alright. So here's our issue here. When that piece is on there, that should spin easy. And you can see, I mean, I have to put quite a bit of force to turn that. And I already wiped this all off and wiped that out. I don't know why it's happening, but it is. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just take... So I'm just going to find a drill bit that barely fits or almost doesn't fit and just run that through there. And I think it will be fixed. All right. Alright, so now that, that turns nice on there now.
She wants to explode. All right, cool, I actually got it on the first try. I wind it too much. All right, see, now I think I got, see, it's really pulling in very hard right here. And when I pull it all the way out, you can feel the spring maxing out. So that means I wound it up too much. So let's just take a wrap or two off of this. One more. At least one more. All right, so that feels good. So now the rope actually stops and you can feel the spring isn't maxing out. All right, so that, that's working great now. All right, well that was an easy job. That's nice I didn't have to buy anything to do that. So the next one here that's broken is this one here. The engine is locked up on it. Let's see, and that actually just happened. And that's actually the reason I started making this video was this chainsaw breaking. So let's uh, see if we can get that working. This one here I got out of a scrap metal pile. When I got it, it had no compression and I put in a new cylinder head and piston and it lasted probably a year or two and then it lost compression again and then there's actually a video of me rebuilding it the second time on my YouTube channel it's an old video and now it lasted about another two years and now this time the thing just locked up solid can't pull it over won't run so let's uh, rebuild this again
right, this piston, it's that should pull off right now. It's that's completely stuck. Let me see if I can pry it out. All right, you can actually see the piston right here. So maybe I, I can just barely get this screwdriver in here. I'll try to pry it out. You know what it looks like happened? See this thing here? This is the uh, the pin that holds in this pin between the, the piston and the cylinder wall. That's not supposed to be there. I think that's all that happened to it. Look at these scores right here. I think that pin came out. Because the rest of this looks okay other than the stuff I just did to it. Oh well. Look at that crack there. I didn't do that. I did this. Alright, this there's no up and down motion in this. It feels tight. Alright, so it's a good idea to rinse out this lower end with gas to clean any metal particles out of there. Alright, so this is what we have for new parts. Alright, so these parts here. Now, if this... The reason this chainsaw was thrown out in the first place it, need, it needed the same part a piston and head and if you go to steel you know that the people who make this chainsaw to buy these parts there's so much money it's not worth it. it you see the price and you're like oh I'll, I'll just go buy a new chainsaw so that's usually why people throw these saws out when they break because the parts are too much money now these parts these are aftermarket I ordered them online, eBay or Amazon has them, and this was like $23 free shipping. So it's like, I mean, it might as well be free, you know, it's like one-tenth or less the price of the parts from the original manufacturer, so, and on this saw, it's really easy to install it, too. Um, a few other, I did another one, this is a steel I, 036, I think it's like a pro saw, kind of, sort of, I don't know. I did one on a steel farm boss, same thing, someone gave it to me, they were throwing it out because it was too expensive to fix, I got the parts, it was like 20 bucks for the piston and head, 
and that saw it was a lot harder to install it on. You had to pretty much disassemble the entire chainsaw. It took a couple hours and it was sort of frustrating. This one, this is like a 20 or 30 minute job to install this on this chainsaw. Alright, so first thing, we're going to put these piston rings on. So there's a top and a bottom. And you can see this, got this little thing here that it's got to go against. So I'm going to start it like that. And that's it. You can see they go right up against that thing when you squeeze it. There's the other one. Alright, so those are on. Okay, now you can see the top of this piston. It's got this arrow. That's supposed to go towards the exhaust. Oh, that bearing goes in there. Alright, that definitely looks good to me. It's in there tight. I didn't take the spring out of it, squeezing it, putting it in there. I don't know why. That looks like what killed it last time. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. All right, that's torque to spec right there. Right, that's got to transfer to the new head.
Alright, that sounds pretty good. Let's take it outside and give it a try. All right, that's running pretty well. That's nice. Um, so now that I'm thinking about it, you know, go check out the video of me rebuilding this thing last time. But you know what I think I did as a mistake when I put in the pin that holds in the pin for the piston? I think I'm pretty sure I squeezed it too much and took some of the spring out of it. So I think when it was sitting in there, it wasn't sitting in there that well. But, you know, that was like at least two years ago. So, um, so it's not really a big deal, especially considering how cheap these parts are and how easy this is to rebuild. So it's just nice that this is working again. All right, well that's cool, that's fixed. All right, this one here, it's been a bunch of years since I've tried to run this thing. I think last time I was using it, it was working, but it wasn't quite working right. Let's take this outside and, and see what this is doing. I'm gonna give it a little gas. So this one here, we were just trying to run it and it kept stalling out. You had to keep pulling the choke, but it wasn't really operable. So let's see if we can get it running a little better. All right, so one thing here, the fuel line, this is cracked. That needs to be changed. All right, so as far as new parts, this is what I got. So here's my original carburetor. 
since this is a this is a craftsman, but it's really not a craftsman. It's really a pull on. Um, so it's hard to get parts for this. Here's a supposed to be a good used carburetor. So I have another carburetor to try. And here is a carburetor rebuild kit. And I could try to rebuild either of those carburetors. The, the way this works, this thing, depending on what position the chainsaw is in, this will follow the gas around. Alright, this is a breather line. Alright, I guess I'll give the uh, eBay carburetor a try. All right, now when you get the carburetor on, before you put stuff all together, make sure things are actually working. So that you can see the choke works fine, and the throttle's working fine.
So it was running, but it's not running quite right. So when you give it gas, it was kind of bogging out, plus the idle was high. So that's what these three screws are here for. So they're, they're labeled. We got L for low speed, H for high speed, and I for idle. So idle just adjusts the idle. That's all it is. It's pretty much like you were squeezing the gas a little bit. So you loosen it up to lower it, turn it in to raise it. Low speed is like the motor running at low RPMs. So it, tight, going in with that makes it leaner, going out with it makes it richer. Pretty much you start at one and a half usually, so you go in all the way, don't tighten it tight, and then come out one and a half on both the low and the high, and then you can adjust them from there. So in this case, it's kind of, it was all right on the low speed, but the high speed was kind of bog, and so I'm going to play with that screw. Maybe go in with it, out with it. I'm, kind of, I'm going to start out going out with it. So this chainsaw seems like it's running very well now. It's starting pretty easy, it idles well, it has good power. So this chainsaw here, this was always my dad's chainsaw. My dad bought this brand new in the mid 80s. And even when I was really little helping my dad with tree work, this was always the chainsaw he would use. And it really has been a very good chainsaw. For being over 30 years old, it really hasn't broken that many times. Um, and I really like running this saw. It's really got a lot of power. You know, it's got more power than that steel 036. You know, it's it's up there with that Husqvarna 357 XP. Not quite there, but it's it's close. So yeah, it's just great to see this running again. You know, if you're looking for parts for one of these, don't search Craftsman. Just figure out, it, it, it was like a Poulon, whatever Poulon model it was, I figured it out. It was a lot easier to search for parts as the Poulon. You can see it's the same exact saw, just different colors. Let me get my dad out here to run this thing. Yeah, pull hard on that. Put the choke off.
How's it run? Runs good. When did you buy that saw? Yeah, a long time ago, 19... Uh, was it 64? No. No. What does it say? I saw one date in the saw. I said 83. 83, 1983. That yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. It's still running. I just put a carburetor on it and a fuel line. Oh, that's why it's running. Yeah. It may not have needed a carburetor. I still have the old one, so. Yeah. So now we have two carburetors for it. Where'd you buy it? It's here. Yeah? Yeah. It's made by Poolin. It's a, it's a Poolin chainsaw with a Sears name tag on it. Alright, well it's good to see it running again. Yeah, it is. Alright, this one here. Let's, uh, I've never messed with this before. Let's, let's see what's up with this thing. Let's see if I can get this running. All right, let's take on a little bit of a challenge. So I bought this at a yard sale a bunch of years ago because I thought it looked cool. Never tried to start it. So let's see what this is. It's got a tag. So right there, we got it's a mall model number 12A. Well, let's see if we can get this running. So. It didn't really come with any story, so looking at it right away, it seems like it's got compression. It's not seized up. That's good. The throttle doesn't feel like it's doing anything, so that needs to be fixed. And it's probably got some sitting problems with the carburetor. So there's the carburetor right there, so let's probably clean that out. All right, let's get right into this throttle, see what's going on there. All right, so pulling that up feels like it's giving a throttle. So I don't know what this had, but I think it's gonna get this. See, that would work, it's like, but you, you can't get it together. Yeah, I, I think I, it's just gotta come apart further than this.
mean, the, the throttle's working, it's just not quite returning all the way. It almost feels like it's binding up in here. Right there, that's back all the way. That should be idle right there. So to trigger down all the way. It's working, it's just not working perfect. You know, I think a lot of it was right here. All right, so it's finally it seems like it's working pretty good. So that's full throttle right there. And if I look at the actual carburetor, you know, that's it's full throttle on the carburetor. Now, when I let off the throttle, it returns all the way on the carburetor. And it snaps back, you know, full throttle off, full throttle off. All right, that seems like that's working. Look at this chainsaw. Oh, that looks like an old one. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's got good spark. Look at this copper fuel line. That's pretty nice. See, that really doesn't look bad. Oh, that's why I didn't take it apart that far. I don't want to overfix it. Well, I guess that looks all right. That's all it is.
And let's start this up. So, uh, let's choke. Someone put aircraft cable as pull rope. I kind of want to replace it. You know, this aircraft cable is a pull rope. I always thought that was a good idea, but now seeing it, I don't think it's a good idea anymore. Let me just put an actual rope in that. All right, so the thing hasn't even popped once. Um, it's got good spark. I'm worried that this the compression's low on this thing, but I don't even have any real way to check it. Throw a little two stroke down in the cylinder. dies.
electric start, but it's uh, running. I think the chain is kind of, one, it seems extremely tight and it's, that's binding up. So let's free that up. All right, so this chainsaw, I'm pretty sure it's not an automatic oiler, meaning you have to pump this every once in a while. It feels like it's pumping oil, though. And so, yeah, it's working. back on here. I don't think it needs electric start anymore. <laughs> and that first pull. This thing this thing runs good. To get it running and be like, yeah, I got it running neat. Um, but it'd be a lot cooler if I bring this on a legitimate tree job. So let's bring this on a tree job and work with it for the day and see how it was like using a chainsaw in the 1950s. And I'm also looking at the uh, owner's manual for this thing on the internet. They're saying it takes 12 to 1. So uh, let's dump out this 40 to 1. I wonder if 1950s oil wasn't as good as 2018 oil. Right, so this thing's got a centrifugal clutch for the drive and um, you can see it it's right in here you can actually see it through this area right in there by the cylinder and uh, it's not working so let's try to get it working it looks like the saw could probably separate right here I think just by taking this off
This is how this works. When this spins fast, the centrifugal force of this spinning pulls these weights apart. And when these weights pull apart, they'll engage this thing and get this turning. So you can see this seems like it's working fine. When I turn that, the chain's moving fine. That's all gear driven in there. And I could see this when it was running. This was not turning. So there should be no issue in this section of it other than this maybe being dirty and greasy. Now this section here, Well, maybe that's our issue there. That should be... This shouldn't just be free turning like that. All right, well, I need an impact wrench or something to go further into this, so... Uh, so let's bring this back to the garage. All right, so I think the issue is just... Right in here. All right, hopefully this will just tighten up. Well, it's tight on there now. Well, that was easy. Let's go try it. It's been below freezing for two days, well below freezing. I had let this warm up for five minutes and then I made it a hundred feet and the fuel froze up.
thing definitely uh, running pretty well. So a few interesting things about this chainsaw. Um, because of the way the carburetor is set up, this chainsaw, the engine can only run in this position. So to cut a tree horizontally, what you'd have to do is you push this lever here and then rotate this. Now I have a chainsaw that can cut a tree horizontal. So it's not an automatic oiler. What you got to pump this oiler as you're running it. Now this chainsaw, it's got some weight to it. It's a it's a very old chainsaw. It was this model was introduced in 1951. Now in 2018, this is almost a 70 year old chainsaw. So that's pretty cool to see it still operating. You know, so this isn't something I'll be bringing on tree jobs often. It's more of like a decoration, but it's just very cool to see that it's running again. All right, while I was back here messing with these chainsaws, I'm noticing this tree that put, could potentially fall in these trailers. So let me move them out of the way and cut that down. So although this was running and working, I'm sure a few people were going to point out that the blade would never stop turning, even at idle, and it's supposed to. So let's just take this apart quick and see if I can fix that. Alright, well, I see the issue right away. It's supposed to have another spring right here, because otherwise these weights were just apart the whole time. So let's see if we can find another spring like this. Alright, so out of this box, I have some stuff that's about the right length, but you can tell it's, it's weaker. And this is a good way to test springs. Hook them together and pull. You see, this one's pulling before this one even moves. See now this one's even stiffer. That's no good. Alright, so none of those are going to work. I just got, alright, so there's our original spring. I just got back from the hardware store. Alright, so this is the best one I got here. It's a little bit weaker, but it's, I think that's acceptable. I'll try it at least. All right, so here's why that spring was missing. This hook that holds it is broken and the spring just can, can fall right out of it. All right, it, it's steel. I think I could just hit that with a drop of weld and fix it.
You know what else I'm noticing? That this is a, uh, key, a keyed shaft, this keyway sheared. Alright, so I'm at my friend's mower shop here. Let's see what we got. It's definitely different than running a new saw. There we go. Jeff, no, I think so. fixed. All right, 250,000. This thing still runs perfect. And this car has almost never broken. All right, so it's important to get that screw tightened right. That way the thing isn't turning when you're not, when you don't want it to turn, but when you pull this. You can see, I think that's too tight. All right, so it's set. I can't turn that. When I push this down, I can turn it. Let's give this a try. All right, let's see if this clutch works now. All right, so this spring isn't stiff enough. This one, it's the, it's too thick to even fit through the holes. Let me just try this spring I've had the whole time. It's shorter, but that might work. Broke the thing. Alright, so that thing right there broke. That's And it's not the one I welded. Here's the one I welded right there. So I'm thinking I could make one out of a nail. Alright, so the nail fits through here. But the head is too big, so I gotta grind that down. All right, that's fine. Alright, so we gotta cut it right about there. Alright, now we need a really small drill bit. Here's a 1 16th.
All right, good. Let's try that outside. finally say the clutch on this thing is working the way it's supposed to. Alright, so that's good. This chainsaw is working about as well as it can. Alright, let's go mess with another one. And while we're on the subject of antique chainsaws, here's a old two-man saw I sold a few years ago. I got this and I got it running. And here's some pictures of me and an old girlfriend running it. It was kind of neat, but like you had to be able to get to both sides of a log so like for example you couldn't cut any of these logs because you couldn't get 180 degrees around it so like with a new chainsaw you could pull them out a little bit and cut them this one it wasn't the case so it was kinda hard to use and it was a two cylinder mercury and to cut horizontally with it you could uh it would rotate right here because the engine you still held it in that position but the whole bar would rotate and then the oil went down on this end where the second operator would hold it Let's talk quick about sharpening chainsaw chains. When I'm out doing a tree job, I'll usually bring extra chains with me. And when a chain dulls, I won't waste time sharpening it on the job. I'll just change it out with a new sharp chain. And then what ends up happening is I'll end up with a bunch of chains that are dull. And I'll sharpen them all at once. They usually stay sharp for a pretty long time. If you hit like a rock, that dulls it usually instantly, or dirt can dull it pretty quick too. So you do want to be careful with them. When chainsaw chains get dull, it's this area right here is what gets dull. And you can usually look at it and tell how sharp a chain is. Just by if the top, if the very top of this flat spot is kind of curved down towards the front, that's when it's dull. So this chain doesn't look terrible but it wasn't cutting that good. Let's find an example of a really dull chain. The very edge of this, that front edge is worn down. There's a couple different ways to sharpen them and chainsaw chains can generally be sharpened at least five or six times before they can't be sharpened anymore. One way to sharpen a chainsaw chain is just with a regular file. So make sure you get the right size file for the chain you're using. And you pretty much just do it just like this. Now you're only filing on the pushing stroke and you want to have the file at the right angle with the chain and kind of rotate the file as you're using it. And that works. It takes some time, but it does do a good job. Okay, so now that's a sharp tooth right there. So what you do is you go around the whole chain, do every one of them, and then flip it around and then do these ones. So another thing you can do, you can this thing is for this is a gauge for for filing down these things. These are called the rakers. So what you do is you kind of set it on on there, and then that gives you like a height. So then you can use a flat file and file that down. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just file these down a lot without even using that gauge. The, usually if you cut these down quite a bit, the chain is a pretty aggressive chain. Alright, so then I picked up this thing to sharpen chains a couple years ago. And I like this. It's a little bit faster. So I'll, I'll put links in the description for these. Th this was just a cheap one. They sell, I, I only paid like 30 bucks for this thing. 
and you know they sell them like up to three four hundred dollars so maybe spending some more money on one might be worth it but uh, this one does a pretty good job so I'll show you how this works so I usually like to put it right at the edge of the table then I'll put a clamp on it so it doesn't move alright so then you set your chain up in this thing so it goes right in that groove like that and then it's got different angles so you set it that way for cutting the, the one side and then you set it this way for cutting the other side so it's got this stop here with this adjuster so what you want to do is you want to put it on there so so what you want to do you use this adjustment here and you just want to cut off the very front of the chain so let's try it so that needs to so this should be tightened so loose. Right, so I'll adjust it in a little bit. A little more. That's pretty much it. If anyone has any suggestions for methods that may be faster, easier, or better for some reason, you know, let me know in the comments. Finally. That's ready to go cut some trees. All right, so let me talk about the first chainsaw I ever had. It's, it's not this one, but it was extremely similar to this. It was orange and pretty much the same style and size and probably very similar in year or two. It, was, it didn't have any safety bar on it. And it, it was just like this. So I probably was 10 years old when I got it. It was something that I got out of the trash and I kind of kept it a little bit of a secret from my dad because he probably would have said I wasn't old enough to have a chainsaw. Um, it was definitely cool to have because before that, you know, to cut a tree or something, the best options were a bow saw or a hatchet, um, both of which are pretty slow. Chainsaw is much faster than those. So having that chainsaw then when I was like 10 was definitely cool because I had a chainsaw, you know, well before any of my friends really. Um, I never did any like huge tree jobs with the thing. 
uh, it, it didn't it never really ran perfect you know to get it started it always took like a shot of starting fluid and then once it was running you know it would start up without it then eventually like my dad saw me using it one day and I was and he was like well, where, where'd you get that chainsaw I'm like no you, you knew I had this this came from out of the trash he's like he's like alright yeah just just be careful with that so <laughs> that was good so that was like permission to have that chainsaw then so that was nice okay so then the second chainsaw I ever had was when Hurricane Floyd happened in 1999, so I would have been 14 years old, and I still had that orange chainsaw at the time, but a bunch of trees blew over in our yard, and, and I know my dad didn't want to clean them all up by himself, so he went out and bought me a brand new chainsaw. It was a, so at the time he had this chainsaw, this was, you know, we, this has been my dad's chainsaw forever. And, uh, you know, we've, this has cut a lot of wood around here. So, yeah, at the my dad bought me a brand new, it was a steel 018. So it was pr like this, probably a little bit smaller. But that was pretty cool to have a brand new chainsaw. You know, it worked much better than that little orange one I had prior to it. So then once I had that brand new chainsaw, that was like my primary chainsaw for a lot of years. I got a ton of work out of that thing, but it only had like a maybe a 14 or maybe a 16 inch bar on it which was kind of too small for cutting into big trees you know if you're cutting up branches and stuff or little trees it was fine but once you got into big logs you would just get annoyed at the thing so I pretty much used that chainsaw until I wore the thing out and I, I sold it maybe five ten years ago now I was pretty broken when I sold it but um, so then after that you know, I always kind of used this chainsaw sometimes, but this was always my dad's. I wasn't really using that heavily. Then, it wasn't this one. This is a steel 036. It was a steel 026, and we got it out of the trash, and it worked. And that was kind of my chainsaw for a bunch of years after that. And I liked it, but it had a few very annoying things about it. For example, on the 026s, and I've seen other chainsaws where they would do it, is this thing would fall off of it all the time and I I could never figure out why I could not get that thing to stay on there and it was just it was really frustrating and then I, even this other guy I was working for he had one and he had it all duct taped together he's like yeah that thing always falls off and then you know but I still used it a lot and then I don't know it would it would got to the point it wasn't really working right I'm sure I could have fixed it now but then I dropped a tree on it one day and it really kind of messed it up pretty good so I eventually sold that one. Actually, the, all right. So then, once that happened, I bought this one brand new because then it was Hurricane Irene happened, and a ton of trees fell down. I had a lot of tree work I had to do, and that 026, that chainsaw really wasn't working. And you know, I didn't have time to be messing with junk chainsaws when that happened. I knew at that point I needed a new chainsaw, so I went and bought this. This was pretty expensive. I paid like over 700 bucks for this thing. But I figured, you know, the guy at the, the mower shop selling it to me, he's like, this is a professional saw. You know, it's got more power than, you know, because there's homeowner saws that look very similar to this for about half the price. But the, uh, the pro saw is like, they consider this like a pro saw. And it, it's, it's got more power and it's easier to fix and it's supposed to last longer. So this has been a very good chainsaw. Um, I still use this as my primary chainsaw. It's not perfect. Some of the complaints I have with it, I've had to fix it a few times, so I bought it in 2011, so that's seven years ago now. So things I've had to fix on this saw since I've had it. Um, one time the coil went bad. One time I had to put a carburetor on it. I put a new eBay carburetor on there. I just put a pull rope in it. And the most annoying thing about this saw and a few of my friends have these same saws as well, and they have the same problem. And I've never even tried to fix it, but sometimes when you put this thing down, all the bar oil will leak right out of it. And then there'll be a puddle under this saw, and it's, it's just pretty annoying. And it's done that since day one. I, went, I even brought it back to the mower shop where I bought it from, and he's like, oh, I fixed it. He did something to it like twice. He's never able to get it working right or not leak all the time. And I've, I've never really messed with it too much, but... Um, I don't know, that's just kind of how it is. So this is a good saw. It's not great because of those few reasons. 
So another thing that was cool about that old little orange chainsaw, I remember a few years for Halloween, you know, we used to do these haunted hay rides, and I would take the uh, chain off of it, and then, you know, as the hay ride would be going by, I'd run out of the woods with the thing, and I, I you know, I'd, I'd be just hitting people with it, and they would freak out because, you know, there's no chain on it, but it's still, it's running, it's vibrating, and <laughs> I, I don't know, some of the kids that w w came to our house for haunted hay rides, I don't know if every one of them always would come back, but it was, uh, that was always pretty funny to do. And, uh, I worked at a haunted hayride last year just for fun driving the trailer. And, you know, they were doing the same thing, but those guys, when they were running out of the woods with the chainsaw, you know, they were just kind of touching the people's feet or whatever. You know, when you're really, like, stabbing people and hitting them with the thing, it's a lot scarier. Since I was just talking about chasing people with a running chainsaw, let's talk about chainsaw safety a little bit. So in the 20 years I've been using chainsaws, I've never had any problems. The only problems I could really say is, you know, there's been times where I've cut down trees and they've gone directions other than I wanted them to go. Um, as far as safety stuff, sometimes I, I've, I've hit my toe a few times with the chain, but, you know, with steel toe boots, that's really not a big deal. Um, I never used to wear any safety stuff whatsoever. Lately, I always try, I, I've been trying to wear safety glasses all the time now. And if you're doing tree work where there's overhead stuff going on, a uh, hard hat's a good idea with a face shield. And definitely hearing protection is a good idea, especially if you're running a chainsaw like over 20 minutes. There's a really nice chart available online. It shows how loud of decibel something is per how long you can listen to that within a 24 hour period. So, I mean, you can usually kind of tell if something's too loud. But it is a good idea. I mean, chainsaws are, are too loud. You need to wear hearing protection. So if you look at the statistics, most chainsaw injuries happen when cutting down trees. So I'm going to cut down a couple dead trees here. And uh, let's point out all the safety issues with these trees. So we have a dead pine tree right here. And right next to it, a dead ash tree. So this pine tree here, it's been dead a couple months now. And it's at the point where it's been losing a lot of branches just on its own. So in a case like that, you definitely want to wear a hard hat and keep an eye on the tree. You don't want to be shaking it around and stuff when you're standing at the base because that could cause branches to fall. So this is a pretty big tree. Um, so when you're going at a tree like that, you know, go at it with a sharp chain. Make sure your chainsaw is not going to run out of gas halfway through it. Most of the time, I just handle a tree like this with a piece of equipment. But I'm going to cut this one down just to demonstrate. So this one here, other thing that makes this one really difficult, it's on the side of a hill and very bumpy terrain all around it. So to make it a little bit safer, I'll clear some of the branches around it just to make it easier to walk around this tree. that way so I'm gonna make it fall that way trying to make it do something opposite what it wants to do is always difficult
All right, that was cool. That's exactly where I wanted it to go. All right, now this tree, it's got its own set of safety concerns. It's one, it's a dead ash. These are pretty weak trees. So I'm gonna put a smaller front cut in it because it's got such a lean on it and I don't want it to pinch my bar. Plus, a tree like this with a big lean, it's got a real tendency to want to split. So you don't want to stand there. And you want to keep an eye on the thing to get ready to move away from it. This here is a good tool to have around if you're dealing with logs, especially if you don't have any heavy equipment, because it's a fast, cheap, easy way to move logs.
All right, let's talk about scaling logs real quick. So for around here, you know, the, the softwoods, it's the pine and the hemlock. When they're small, they're generally garbage. You could rarely even give them away. Sometimes guys with outdoor wood boilers will take it, but it's not usually easy. Bigger stuff like this, generally sawmills will want this, but they only want it green. So this was a standing dead tree. They Once the tree's been dead for pretty quick, it starts getting holes in it and gets bugs in them, and then they're no good. But some guys will take it. Some guys aren't so picky. So for measuring quantity of wood, what they use is a, uh, to scale them it's called, it's called a Doyle log scale. And what this does, it tells you how many, how much board feet are in the log. So what you want to do is you want to measure from the smaller end, and then you go right, you know, right across. So this, and then it's got the different lengths. So here we got the top set of numbers is for a 16 foot log. Middle set is 14, bottom set is 12. This side's got 18 and 10. So these logs, I cut them 16. So you go across there, you look at our top number, and right here, we are right on 361 board feet. So when you go to bring these logs to a sawmill, or you sell them to someone, you could, that's how you generally do it, by the board foot. But then, I mean, I'm not an expert on this. There are so many factors that go into this, and there are guys that are experts that just scale logs all day every day because there's like there'd be a million different grades of pine and then every type of hardwood and then there's different grades of each hardwood there's quite a bit to it so if anyone who's an expert at it wants to comment and leave some advice on that you know that'd be helpful but that's you know I'm not in the wood I'm not taking down trees to sell them as logs every time I've done that like there's never enough money in it like I always got to be getting paid to take the tree down too because you know, like in this case, this tree was, I was worried it was going to fall on this building, so that's why I wanted this down. But that went pretty well. All right, well, that pretty much concludes my chainsaw video. So I covered a bunch of repairs and just told a bunch of stories. So if you're someone who's never had a chainsaw before, hopefully this video was helpful or entertaining.